Welcome to the offices of Exact Earth here in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And thanks for joining us today for our webcast showcasing our brand new Exact Earth ShipView product. I'm Nicole Schill and I'll be your host today as we take you through a full tour of the ShipView platform, otherwise known as your porthole into the world shipping. I'm joined here today with Graham Stickler, our VP of Product Management, and Taylor Nichols, the Geospatial Services Product Manager and the proud architect of Exact Earth ShipView. We're going to take the next 20 minutes uh, or so sharing the ShipView experience with all of you. And if you have any questions throughout, please submit them through the chat window. Uh, we're going to take some time at the end to go through some of them. If we don't have time to get to them all, we will be sure to email you as soon as possible. So let's get started on this tour. Uh, to give you a bit of background about ShipView, let's talk with Graham about the initial factors driving this new platform. So Graham, can you give us some history around ShipView, kind of what sparked the need to build it? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think for a history of ShipView, we have to actually go back a stage before to uh, move into geospatial web services. So as a company, we moved uh, along from providing just raw AIS data, which a lot of people sometimes find difficult to consume if they're not familiar with it. And we produced a set of geospatial web services. And what we really mean by that is it's a set of data that's consumable on the web, nice and simple to understand, and is information about ships. And, and having done that, we needed a way of demonstrating to people how easy it was to view these data in different browsers and, and with simple tools. So we built a simple tool to allow people to look at this data. And I think we found very quickly, having shown this to people, that uh, we got a lot of response about, well, why can't we buy that? So we, we saw a very quick need for people to have a very simple prepackaged tool for consuming these geospatial web services. And I think that was uh, where ShipView originally came from. Nice. So what, what do you, would you say is the primary uh, customer need that ShipView is filling? Well. In, in real simple terms, our data is geospatial in nature, which sounds a bit of a mouthful, but it, it has location information, so it is best seen on a map. And that's what ShipView provides you. It's, it's really simple information on a map. When you get the data from, from Exact Earth, you view it in a map form. It makes immediate sense to our eyes. Instead of being rows and rows of data, we see ships on their real position on the Earth's ocean surface, all in context, and it provides you a very simple set of tools to consume that. And I think most people nowadays are very familiar. We have a, a generation of internet-enabled people who understand maps. You know, there are, most of us would expect when we look for restaurants or whatever it is nowadays on the internet to see a map. And we now see exact earth and shipping information immediately on a map and it's there in front of you and as I said it's easy to make sense of with the human eye straight away. So what would you say was the importance of using a software as a service as a platform for ShipView? Well one of the first in, uh, reasons for that was along the lines of again keeping it simple for people um, with software as a service we are taking all the responsibility uh, in terms of providing the application providing the data and all the user needs is a browser, so that, that is the fundamental part of that. I think there's another sideline to this in terms of what we do as a business in terms of data, in that as we're growing as a business, we're collecting more and more and more information over time. You know, We're up to over 6 million satellite AIS messages a day now. If people were to take um, a combined coastal feed from us, from our, from our partners at Vessel Tracker, we would be in the tens of millions of messages a day. And to be frank, a lot of people just can't cope with all that data. And instead of solving problems for them, we're actually giving them problems with that amount of data. So the software as a service platform is very important because it takes all of that away from the user. All you worry about is logging into your browser, and we are doing all the hard work and all the heavy lifting for you. So how would you say uh, ShipView fits into the product strategy here at Exact Earth? Uh, it's a very important keystone now because providing this window into our data, um, ShipView is a essentially a platform as much as anything else now. Um, going forward, as we deliver more and more information to our customers, then ShipView will be the platform on which we, we can deliver that very simply. Because it's software as a service, the customers aren't running any software. 
We don't have to update customers with software to do this. We can just update information that's flowing through that platform and everybody who's logging in, in theory, can get access to it. So examples of that would be we've already in the, in the first release of ShipView now, or the first subsequent release, we've added Ship Photos, for example. That was a very simple thing for us to do at our end, and now people who log in can get to see Ship Photos. As we add more and more data, do more and more data analytics, things like that, then we will see that ShipView will be the, the, the delivery platform for that, for our, for our whole ongoing product strategy. Thanks, Graham, for that insight into why ShipView was built. Now let's talk with Taylor Nichols a little bit about how ShipView was built. So, Taylor, what design requirements were considered when building ShipView? ShipView was designed uh, with speed, performance, interoperability, and global support for web access through different browsers. ShipView is also uh, designed with modern UI principles that uh, lessens the learning curve for users to, to get into the system, use and adopt it based on other techniques used in common uh, popular mapping tools. So that's great. So can you tell us a bit about what level uh, of compatibility or integration uh, ShipView has then with other GIS applications? Right. So ShipView allows people to ingest externally published uh, GIS services. So ShipView allows people to, to consume Open Geospatial Consortium web map services. You can use services from Esri, so you can pull in dynamic map services, feature services, tiled map services, all to, to improve uh, the customized look of ShipView, to give more information that may be coming from your back office uh, data or other popular data sources on the, on the internet. Further to that, um, ShipView allows you to download track data or vessel information data as both GML, geographic markup language, as well as KML, uh, keyhole markup language used in Google Earth. Further to that, uh, there's a cool feature in ShipView that allows you to export filters and rules and groups that you've, you've created, and that really allows you to use them again against our geospatial web services, or GWS from, from Xactor. Nice. So I know you were really close uh, to ShipView and the building of it, so maybe you can tell us some of your favorite features in ShipView. Yeah, so top three um, for me would be historical tracks. So one of the big things that um, we provide from Exact Earth is the longest look back of global maritime activities. So from ShipView, you can see the latest vessel information, which is fantastic to improve uh, maritime operational domain awareness, but you can also go back up to 90 days to fetch um, vessel movements and characteristics for boats, again, up to 90 days. So you can see where they've been where they've uh, come from, and any patterns that may be introduced throughout that 90-day uh, that period. Second to me would be photos. So knowing where boats are uh, and their critical information is, is obviously important, but also giving a little bit of a different spin to it by providing photos about any of the vessels in our, in our database is important for users to get that secondary uh, kind of visual validation. And thirdly would be extending the platform. So we talked before about how you can ingest other external map layers, but we also allow you to add as many multiple layers of exact earth ships that you need um, that have their own, their own rules, their own groups, their own filters, um, and add as many of those as you like to really customize, again, um, the different parameters and different characteristics that you're looking for to really target in on what... Uh, what you're really looking at, uh, understanding the, the monitoring of ships. So those are some great features. Um, what then are some examples of operational activities that a maritime authority or a government user could then perform in ShipView? Right, so ShipView at its core uh, has been built to monitor ships, simply put. Um, kind of leveraging uh, some, of, some of the favorite features of mine uh, with multiple layers. You can add simple or complex rules to any number of exact earth ship layers um, to really subset or uh, focus in uh, your attention on critical attributes about vessel movements or activities globally or within your area of interest. That level of fine tuning, um, of searching for, for ships that meet your criteria, really finds the needle within the haystack in, in many ways and improves how uh, operational groups can really save time and money uh, improving on traditional methods of monitoring uh, maritime activity. 
So we're welcoming both new ShipView customers and those unfamiliar to the platform here today. So to get us all on the same page, we're going to have Taylor walk us through this new platform to show you all just what it's capable of and how it will transform the way you view the world shipping. So Taylor, why don't we start by getting familiar with ShipView and going through what all uh, the buttons up along the top are for. Thanks, Nicole. So we're going to log into ShipView using uh, your username and password that's provided by Exact Earth. You can find uh, the website at shipview.exactearth.com. So once the application opens and it uh, starts up at your last uh, viewed location or if you're a new user where uh, you initially start off, it's, uh, it's a global view. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, all the features and functionality of ShipView, uh, starting with the top tool row bar and moving down into the left-hand panels. So from the top left to right up here we see uh, the ability for you to search. You're able to search on Mimsy, name, IMO, call sign, and country. Beside that is the bookmarks tab where you're able to add or remove a bookmark. What I'll do here is I'll just move my map a little bit to the North Pacific and actually make a, a new bookmark here. I give it a name, click accept, and now anytime I move or pan the map and want to come back to the North Pacific bookmark, I go back here, click on North Pacific. Inside the bookmark tab, I have a gazetteer of uh, common sea areas. From the drop down, you click the button, a whole bunch of sea areas and oceans that you can click on to quickly zoom to. I'll go to the Java Sea. Beside that, we have a grid if you want to see graticule lines, latitude and longitude lines. To the right of that, we have the Find by Area, Find by Location tools, as well as the ability for you to manage polygons. To the right of that, we have a, a Home button to take us back to our Home view. I can click that, and because my starting Home view is the same as when I initially logged in, it takes me back to the World view. I can modify that just as easy as a bookmark. I'll zoom here to the North Atlantic Ocean and from the drop down just beside the home button I can click set to present and this is where the next time I log in the application will start. Beside that under our username we have access to our preferences, what's new in ShipView, getting access to our help and support group about the application and the option to log out. As I said, also touch on the left-hand panel. Uh, top to bottom, we have three panes that uh, we can interact with the application. The first one is Vessel Information. The second one here is Layers. And the third one is Base Maps. I can change my base map by simply clicking on one of the toggle buttons. And instead of the default Oceans base map, we can get a light gray um, uh, context base map for us to see. I can choose between streets, aerial imagery, National Geographic, or OpenStreetMap. So now I'll kind of get the application back to where uh, we first logged in to run through some of the tools and functionality of the application. So I'm going to zoom out here, back to the global scale. And I'm going to start with the, um, the search bar. Like most of you, it's getting to be winter here in Canada. Uh, we all dream of being in the Caribbean somewhere, so I'm going to search for the Carnival Cruise Line ships. So in the search bar, I'll just type in Carnival. It's going to go out against our geospatial web services and find uh, any vessels with the name uh, Carnival in it and returns it back to us in our search results panel. In this panel, you see a list of all vessels uh, that have the name Carnival in it that uh, also shows the Mimsy, IMO, call sign, destination, a flag, the option for us to zoom to that location, as well as a little photo icon here that will open up a ship image. 
So in this case, me clicking on that brings up a photo of the Carnival Paradise. If I want to zoom to the Carnival Paradise, what I can do is just click anywhere along that record and it zooms me into its location. So now that we've zoomed to the Carnival Paradise, what happens is uh, a track is automatically uh, displayed here. In my case it's a five day track and I was able to set that in my preferences. So anytime I click on a vessel, uh, automatically uh, the number of day track is displayed within the vessel information panel. In that panel we're able to see information about the boat, uh, it's information about uh, where it is, where is it going, uh, a track timeline as we talked about, uh, the ability for us to adjust the, the number of days look back up to 90 days, and also access to the ship photo like we showed before. So that's one way to search for ships. Another way to search for ships is to use the Find by Area tools. So I click my home button, it takes me back to uh, my favorite or default extent here. And what I'm going to do is use a Find by Circle tool to, to get a list of all vessels that uh, are in that area of interest. To do that I click on the map once, I move my cursor to the left or right, a circle is displayed and when I'm done or happy with that area I double click to finish. In the same way our text search worked, uh, the area information that falls within that circle is also provided back to me here. Same information that we saw before in terms of the content that's available, the options to click on vessel images as well as the option to zoom to any of those ships. In addition because there's far more um, ships then we can list in one panel. There's some options below to be able to navigate between each of the, the listings. In this case we had 203 ships found. If I want to actually use that area um, in the future, if this is my area of interest or um, something to that effect, I can actually create a layer, a new map layer from this area to be used uh, again in later purposes. So I'll click on the Create New Layer button. A drop down here comes into view and what we're able to do is pick uh, an instance of the latest vessel information. I can pick a style, how the vessels are rendered on the, on the screen. In this case I'm going to use Speed uh, Grouped and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Circle and North Atlantic. click Add Layer, and what happened is in our Layers panel a new layer has been added. So what we'll do is we'll go over there to the Layers panel, open that up, and you can see Circles in North Atlantic pops up. The same 203 vessels is listed here, as well as 172 of those are in view. At this point I'm going to talk um, a little bit about how to um, use the map layers, specifically the exact earth layers, and talk about some of their features and functionality. So at this point we were able to create a brand new layer from a searched area. So the filter that's automatically popping up is it's showing any vessels that falls within that uh, area of interest. It's been given a default uh, name by the application to change that, I'm going to actually show you some of the features about managing polygons. So I go up to our Manage or Draw Area Polygon drop down, click Manage Polygons. You can see here uh, the name of this saved polygon corresponds to the one I just drew that was automatically given to me by Ship View, but I'm going to change that and call it North Atlantic AOI click enter to save that. I can close that and now my layer that's referencing that uh, save polygon is now renamed within my filter. So it provides you easy access to update and manage all your polygon information. About the layer itself, at the top here, 
um, it says circle and north at and that's really not what I wanted it to say I wanted to say circle and north Atlantic so I can actually show a first uh, piece of functionality with the layer options I click on that cog um, icon and I can actually modify the name even further to give it the rest of the Atlantic to be more specific because circle in North Atlantic doesn't make a lot of sense I can change it to be area of interest in North Atlantic I could also change the style in which it's being drawn and I'll show you the legend in just a second and also adjust the transparency to make features below this particular layer more clearly visible. I'm going to turn off the default exact AIS layer just to show those 203 vessels specifically that uh, related to the circle that I drew previously. From the layer tab I can show the legend that relates to the speed by um, the speed group style so here I click on the legend button and the different icons that I can see on the map to the right are displayed so the red icons are vessels grouped uh, that are equal to, to zero speed uh, speed over ground or in knots and the purple uh, speeds are anything greater than 20 knots beside the legend I have the ship list uh, from this drop down here I can download all ships in the area I can download all ships totally I can do that both as a CSV or a KML I'll click download all ships as a CSV goes out to ship view and GWS and pulls back a CSV file when I click on that in my case Microsoft Excel opens up and all 203 vessels with all the information about that a set of boats is displayed here for me to use offline perhaps in a different analysis or something I'll close my legend clean up my uh, interface just a little bit and start talking a little bit about um, filtering so by default because I started this new layer from a selection um, by area the uh, the area filter is automatically included here but what I can do is start to add to that uh, rule in this case I want to find all cargo boats traveling more than uh, let's say 15, 15 knots so within the filter here I can create a new rule in this case I'm going to pick vessel type because I want cargo boats so I click vessel type from the drop down here I can pick any uh, vessel type from cargo boats to passenger boats to sailing ships fishing and so on and so forth but I'll pick cargo boats hit the accept button now my view is actually going to change it's going to be not just within the circle that I drew but also only those vessels that are cargo so in this case it moved from 203 vessels down to 93 so every ship that you see here on the map are all cargo boats I can click on any one of them here and inside of my vessel information panel it's updated with uh, the information about that particular cargo boat back to the layers panel I said I wanted to also find uh, cargo boats in that area that are traveling more than 15 knots so I'll do uh, the process again and I'm going to add uh, a speed filter so from my drop down here I pick speed it says value in knots is greater than or equal to but I could pick any of these other terms less than uh, greater than not equal to or between I like 15 knots so I'll just type in 15 there click accept and just like before my map has been further subsetted down to only uh, those cargo boats traveling more than 15 knots so we're down to 17 ships excluding the one that I just picked so I'll go back to the vessel information panel and click uh, clear ships track
Now that we see the 17 cargo boats traveling more than 15 knots in our area of interest, what we can do is start looking into another set of functionality built in the ship view that looks at importing external map layers from a variety of services. You can add new external um, OGC WMS map services or Esri map services to the layer list, but you can also do that in the base maps as well. What I'm going to do here, because we're looking at cargo boats in the open ocean, I'm going to bring in wave heights from NOAA that's going to show significant um, uh, height values of, of different waves in the area. So to do that, I go to my base map tab, I click add new base map, pick the tile map service option, I give it a name, wave heights, I put in a URL of a known endpoint, in this particular case a tile map service, and toggle on whether or not the origin is top left. At that point I click check overlay URL to verify that that URL that I've submitted for this particular base map is valid and ShipView can access it and subsequently display it on the map. Because I can, I can click add overlay. What happens here is that my base map is now going to draw significant wave heights from the NOAA data set. From this data set we can see that the dark red in the middle here is significant wave heights. This particular rendering shows different directions of the flow of current and so it's no surprise that a lot of our vessels are actually staying away from the center of the, the high waves or the significant waves kind of staying on the outside. So that's one level of customization that you can import external map layers. The final that I'll look at is how to customize the preferences and settings within ship view. So to access preferences to, to give a different customization and all the options that you have available to you under your username and preferences a new panel will pop open that lets you turn on and off different uh, features and functionality of the application to suit your own needs. Running from top to bottom we can turn on or off the geographic location information coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the display when you move your, map, you move your mouse on the map. We can remember our application state so the last time the last location you've logged into uh, you start right back in that spot. The option of having a hover tool turned on and off, measurement tools, uh, what um, distant measurement you like either kilometers, miles or nautical miles adding a scale bar to the map, unfiltered data of exact AIS latest vessel information, showing base stations, SAR aircraft, aids to navigation are all available from the map options. As I talked about at the start of the demo was the default track duration. So if you recall five days was my default, I can change that to maybe 15. Number of minutes my map automatically refreshes, zero being never, and one up until the number of minutes you'd like it to refresh at. Also you have an ability to set the maximum look back time of exact AIS. So by default 90 days shows up uh, within the display but if you wanted only to look at data within the last one hour you can click enabled and adjust the hours and minutes to suit your needs for customization. I'll turn on atons and base stations I'll enable measurement in miles, I'll turn on a scale bar, and I'll enable the geographic location information to come up in the bottom right hand corner. And When I do that, you can see that the application now has a scale bar down here, has our geographic locations outlined there, and if we were nearer to the coast we can see some base stations in yellow and atons displayed here, this green symbol. Lastly, from our under our name option here, we can see what's new within ShipView, new features and functionality at the different levels that it's currently at. In this case, 1.1.1 is the most recent release of ShipView. You can find and access help to our Xactor support uh, team here through this option and our help and support. And finally, to log out of the system, you click log out. 
Thanks for the demo, Taylor. Um, our product team here works tirelessly to make sure ShipView is uh, living up to customer needs. And uh, the quick release of this new version, as Taylor mentioned, 1.1.1, uh, really demonstrates our commitment to building this platform in line with all of our users' needs. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I think at this time we're going to take some of the questions that have come in uh, throughout. Um, we had a few that came in from, um, from you guys, so we want to uh, get to those. Our first question asked about where we're pulling um, the images of the ships in from, Taylor. So we uh, are able to access our partner vessel trackers, uh, robust and extensive photo database that we access through ShipView to provide you those, those images. Okay, great. Uh, the next one is in uh, relation to our customer support. Uh, someone wanted to know what uh, what type of support we're, we're offering for ShipView. Yes, so the Exact Earth customer support, uh, support team has 24-7 um, access to our staff to answer questions at any time you may have them. We also have a Zendesk um, online repository of of information about ShipView, documentation, uh, a knowledge base, uh, commonly asked questions that uh, you can navigate to through that help and support button uh, underneath your username in ShipView. Uh, it will link you over to Zendesk and you can search through the knowledge base and potentially get the information you need. Uh, but if you do need to contact us, uh, again, we're here 24-7 to answer your questions. Great. Uh, so I think uh, we're going to wrap it up at, at this point. Again, if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions, we will um, submit uh, a response to you through email as soon as we can. Uh, we do love receiving feedback, so if you have a question or a comment uh, about our new ship view, drop us an email at info at exactearth.com or visit the ship view page on our website, uh, www.exactearth.com. If you're keen to get ShipView into your office today, uh, there's a uh, you can complete a request for quote actually right on the website. So uh, we want to take this time to thank everyone for joining us today, and um, thanks. We'll catch you next time.